let's create two objects, a sphere, which we can move over here, and a character, Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, and we can go for any kind of character. We just need some geometry to try things out. Your B's character, for example. We need to scale him down. He arrives in a size of meter, in dimensions of meter, and we have a grid in dimensions of centimeters here. I want to keep the sphere as a, a, as a reference. Now let's uh, right mouse click, create a new material, assign a new material, and we'll create an Arnold shader, standard surface shader. So uh, the chap is white now. Uh, if we turn this to black, he becomes black, of course. Now let's map the color. That means we'll use some procedural technique in order to change the color, make it more sophisticated. And um, usually we go for experimental uh, purposes to bulge checker or file texture or a grid or uh, a ramp but this time we go to a fluid texture and I think it's the only texture which is actually depending on an animation so fluid texture 2d there's another one down here called fluid texture 3d which basically works the same but will uh, stick to the 2d version here so just click it and when we uh, uh, select this one or just click here uh, the character will turn black this is the container for our texture but when we run the simulation I extend the range now to 500 frames uh, we won't see anything because we haven't got a fluid yet and I think uh, this could be optimized in the user interface so we don't need that extra step but now we need that extra step and uh, let's just introduce an emitter here uh, we need to go from modeling to fx and uh, under fx we have the fluids and that's what the fluid texture 2d shape the fluid texture wants it wants a fluid and uh, so it's currently only a box with nothing in it and now we add contents and we add an emitter and the emitter arrives in the center of the scene and we move the emitter down and slightly to the right so it gets slightly asymmetrical and what's happening now is quite amazing you see it affects the character it's a fluid dynamic simulation here in a box. It's restricted to that box. And that uh, texture is mapped in 2D on our character in the back. Now we'll change basically two things. Um, we go to the fluid texture here. Further down, we have um, the turbulence. Maybe this section is closed when you open it first time. So we'll open it and add some turbulence and increase the frequency if you like and the detail uh, you can change the turbulence frequency etc just to make our simulation a little bit more interesting we have in the outliner we have the fluid emitter that's the actual emitter we've just chosen and here is the fluid texture and we can use the texture uh, node here which is right here in order to change something about the color so let's open the shading and under shading we have the color and when we change the black well actually let's leave the black here and uh, in that gradient here we can choose another color, color like red here and a little bit further to the right maybe a yellow like this or maybe let's go for a green more or less kind of green here yeah so it gets quite funky uh, now the simulation looks like this so here is the turbulence which is working it's actually you can't use the turbulence field which is under effects here so you need to use the turbulence field which is built in the fluid fluids uh, section and the fluids don't have to do anything with the bifrost fluids 
it's a totally different section. They are just incompatible. They don't interact with each other. They're just two different systems. Um, now, the final thing here is an important one, and that's all the way up here in the fluid texture. Uh, it's the resolution. And the resolution, sometimes called the voxel size, uh, is set to 40 by 40, which means this resolution uh, simulates quite fast, basically in real time. Um, but we can increase this, f especially for rendering, to 300 by 300, for example. Since it's a square, we we'll sh should choose uh, equal numbers here. And now we get a much more sophisticated development of our fluid simulation here. Of course, we need to cache this in order to see it properly. So, uh, final thing, we'll select the, uh, the sphere and we assign an existing material, namely the standard shade uh, surface shader. And that's what we have. Thank you for watching and have a good day.